Welcome back to Man vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about all things board game related. Today we're bringing you a review of Fields of Green by Stronghold Games. This is a continuation of the Among the Stars series, and this is a really good game. It's a two to four player game, engine building, tableau building, some farm building, and then some card drafting. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot like Among the Stars if you've ever played that, uh, but with a farm theme, which I think lands with us a little bit better sure. than, than Among the Stars. So in the start of the game, each player is going to start with a silo and a water tower. Uh, this is a game that's already in progress, so you'll see some of the farms already pre-built out. However, getting back to the silos and the towers, your silo will start with one piece of uh, grain or wheat in it, and then your water towers will start with three water resources. These are the two main resources that you're going to be using throughout the game to make everything happen. Yeah, what's unique about the water towers that we should talk about is that they have a range of two. So you'll be building multiple ones of these through the course of the game. Four different types of cards you'll be acquiring and building into your farm. You have fields, livestock, construction, and then buildings. Your first three main ones are active abilities, things you can harvest right. and get, gather new resources or special abilities. Uh, and your last one is basically your end of the game scoring cards. Right, the buildings come into play. I mean, you can take them right away in the game, mm -hmm. but um, it really comes more into rounds two and three, I think. Yep. You have a number of equipment. These equipment pieces will be acquired through construction mm -hmm. uh, cards, and they will allow you to modify your farm locations in very specific ways. Now, these pieces of equipment um, will go face up on these cards, and you are limited to two per card that you have, and they cannot be the same ones. We'll go over the equipment cards in a little yeah. bit. Uh, you will also have a number of uh, victory point tiles and money denominations, and then some uh, aid cards. Yeah, great player aid cards. Uh, that will help you through the course of the game. So the actual structure of the game is a little bit different if you're playing with a two-player game or a three or four-player game. We're going to be talking about the four-player game, but we'll talk a little bit at the end about how how it's a little bit yeah, different as well. Yeah, some interesting differences. So here, here's how the game starts. Uh, each player at the start of the round will do the upkeep phase. During the upkeep phase, now you don't do this at the very right. first round of the game, but typically at the upkeep phase, each player is going to gather one piece of wheat, two water, and then three dollars. Now, you have to be able to house the resources that you acquire at any time during the game. If you require a piece of wheat and you don't have enough silo locations to hold it, it gets discarded. You don't get it. Each silo can hold four pieces of wheat and each water tower can hold three uh, of the water. Uh, that is the first part of the upkeep and then each player is going to draw a total of six cards from the stacks. Now, this is important. Simultaneously, players are allowed to take any um, denominations from any of these things, up to six total cards. But you have to take from three different stacks. Yeah, let's show an example of that. So on my turn, I could take three fields, two livestock, and then one construction. Now these are all blind. You have to take them all before you can start looking at them. Exactly. And, you know, as in another example, I could take four from one stack and one from two other stacks. It, this all comes into play because these are going to be drafted. Yes. But you're able to affect the basically the probability of getting the type of card you might want on your turn by putting more of those into the whole draft. During the second phase is the action phase. This is the main meat of the game. During your turn, you're allowed to look at the six cards at the start, and you're allowed to pick any one of them that you wish to use. When you pick that card, put it in your hand, and you pass the other ones to your left. Now, simultaneously, each player is allowed to play this card, doing one of five different things that they yeah. wish to do. The first thing is to simply build it. If they wish to build a location, they look at the cost in the upper left-hand corner and pay that. In this case, you have three, seven, five gold. Some of them will also require water. Now, it's very specific in the way that water works. When you build a location, it has to be within two adjacent locations to it. So if I were to build these horses, I'd have to build it within two of a water tower. Yeah, if it, but only if it requires if it required water, water. Uh, requires water uh, on that particular card. The second action you can take is to discard the card and build a water tower. Exactly. There's water tower cards just like the one you started the game with. You can simply discard the card from your hand at that at that time and Take the water tower card, add it to your farm, and pay two gold for it. Yes. Likewise, you can discard the card in the same fashion and take a silo card and add it to your farm, noting that this one does not cost any money. Mm -hmm. But remember, the water towers come with three water, 
The silos do not come with any food. Right. Uh, the fourth action you can take is you can go to the market. You can discard that card as well and gather two dollars. You can gather up to six dollars total by paying one wheat from your silos. So I could discard my card, get two, and then discard one of my wheat to get another two for four total. Yeah, and this is one of the very basic engines that everyone has access to. So if you're building a farm that's producing a lot of food, and then you want to have room to take that extra food at the end of the round, you can get rid of some of it this way just to earn some money. The last action you can take is to restore location. During the next step, you will have to harvest all of the locations within your farm. Sometimes you can't pay for that harvest cost, which will require you to take that location and to flip it face down, which means it's now a closed location. Right. In order to reactivate the ability and get that ability for the rest of the game, you're going to have to open it back up or restore it. To do that, you can discard that same card that you drafted and pay $1 to the bank and then flip that card back face up. Right. Uh, those are the main five actions that you can take on your turn. Now remember, this is going to happen six times during the round because you're going to take one of the cards, do that action, pass. Take the cards, take the five cards, take one action, and pass until none of the cards are remaining. And that will signify the end of the round. But there's one more thing that happens in that round, and that's the harvest phase. Are we going to talk about harvest? Yeah, the harvest is where you're going to basically look down at the table, the engine that you've built in your farm, and go through it and activate whatever cards you want to or can mm -hmm. with the resources that you have allotted. So for instance, if I have some field cards that activate on using some water to produce food, I can do that. Then I could use the food that was produced or any food that I already had to then go to maybe one of the livestock fields and activate that with the food. You can do these things in any order you choose, mm -hmm. but as you do it, they recommend basically placing the resources off of your water towers and your silos onto the cards that you're using to signify that you've used those cards. Yeah, so the typical breakdown of a card, as David was alluding to, you have the cost and then you have the harvest on the bottom of these actions. Now some of these cards, when you place them, do have a harvest, which is green. Some of them are instant abilities, which are gray, yeah. and some of them are gold, which are end of the game abilities. Again, as David said, anytime you have to pay water, it has to be within two locations. So that water is not only important for where you initially place, but also harvest as well. Remember, every single card that you have in your farm, if it's available to be harvested, it has to be harvested. Yeah. So it's kind of like a maintenance cost to your farm. If you can't pay that water, it becomes a closed location then. Right. And uh, in some cases, you may do that on purpose. You sure, know, If there's absolutely. a card that you've added to your farm that's not really working with your engine, you could basically forego harvesting that one. Yep, and that signifies the end of the round, and then the first turn uh, marker will pass to the player on the left and then you'll redraft six cards. You'll go through this for four rounds. Four, time, four rounds in total, mm -hmm. and there's going to be a lot of cards on the table. Yeah. Um, but remember, when you're, there's going to be a lot of discarding cards to get water towers, to get yeah. silos. So the farms aren't going to be as big as you might think. So four rounds, it's not going to be 24 cards large, for sure. It could be, though. It could it, be it, if you wanted not. to, although you would have a very dry farm if you went there. Yeah, so we'll talk about the review. Uh, that's one of the, uh, let me start with the positive. My positive first. It's it's a fantastic hand management tableau game. Oh yeah, card drafting. I love games that have card drafting. On the flip side, this game is an absolute table hog. It is a table hog. I would. I don't know that I would list that as a con, but you should be aware. If you're going to play this at four players on a small four seat table. Mm -hmm. uh, be prepared to move some things around to make things fit. And the other thing is the harvest phase can be extremely fiddly at times. There's a it, lot of people doing a lot of different things at once. It suggests that it's done simultaneously, but for new players, they're gonna need help trying to absolutely. figure out where to put the water, how far it reaches, and then taking all those special abilities. Not to mention that the equipment pieces, when they're gathered, those will also have special abilities that will come into effect, typically during the harvest that allow them to break the rules in the game. Yeah, what I like about this, I'd say the biggest pro, I mean, other than the fact that I really just like the game uh, in and of itself, but one of the things I think it does that I haven't seen in too many other games is there's a lot of tableau building games where you're adding cards and using those cards, and you're just kind of abstractly putting them down on the table. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that you're taking cards and puzzling them out into a farm. The, the whole restrictions of how close water towers have to be to fields. Yeah. Uh, it makes it really interesting. Plus, there are a lot of other cards too. There may, I may have a field that benefits from being at least two spaces away from any other type of field. So every time you choose a card, or in a lot of cases, you're faced with an interesting decision of like, well, I could add this, but 
can I add it in the best way possible to maximize what I'm going to get from it? Right. So to score the game at the end, there's a variety of different things that are going to contribute to your final score. All of the cards that you've built out in your farm, some of them will give you victory points mm -hmm. depending upon what they are. Of course, any of the in-game buildings will give you a number of victory points depending on if you've built like specific type of livestock right. or if you've built specific type of fields and so forth. You're going to get money f or victory points for your money. You're going to get victory points for any of your water towers that are empty. You're going to want to manage those in the perfect way that so by the end of the game you don't have any water that's left over. Yeah, it's all about efficiency when it comes to using the water. And then any of your equipment pieces that you did not use uh, when you acquire these equipment pieces, um, you can either put them onto one of the tiles immediately or place them or keep them face down in front of you and then use them when a new tile or a new card is placed. You can also not use them at all during the course right. of the game and these are worth a victory point at the end of the game for each one that you don't use. Yeah, I mean, that's the game's play, and we touched on a couple of the things that we liked about it. I'd say one of the things that I find really interesting, you know, we play a lot of engine building games. Engine builders mm -hmm. are one of my favorites for sure. This one has this nice, really uh, approachable um, theme around the engine building. Like yeah. I said earlier, you're using water to grow crops. Uh, you can just do that, or you can then add livestock uh, to your farm and use those crops to feed your livestock. Yeah and make money, then the money you make allows you to buy better locations for your farm. I mean, it all just kind of is that nice little cycle. And it, it, once you've played it, it becomes very easily it's, to, it's, easy to grasp for really anyone. It's really cool how the drafting portion of that also feeds into it. If you want to get those cards to build into your farm, you can draft those. You may not get them by the time they come to you, but you can also be very observant of what other people are drafting. If a lot of people are drafting buildings, you may want to draft construction yards to right. be able to go a different route or, or filter what you're drafting to get particular results. Now, I will also mention the two-player game. A lot of the games like that are drafting games, when they boil down to a two-player game, they get distilled down. They're not as good. They actually made a really good variant in this that I enjoy. When you're drafting your six cards at the start of the game, you take all six of those, of course you look at them, and then the other player will draw their six, and then they're all mixed together. Right. And then you lay out six of the 12 cards face up, and then the starting player will draft one of those six cards, the other player will draft one, and then two more will get introduced. Right. And you keep introducing new cards until there's six cards left, and then you just draft out the rest as normal. Yeah, it gives you the flavor of a draft, but kind of evens the playing field. It also changes the dynamic of the game a lot as well. You can actually see the cards in front of you, which is different. In, in the regular drafting, you have the idea of the first six that you have, but you have no idea what the other cards could be at the table. So you're getting a blind hand. When you're drafting in a two-player game, you will always see six cards in front of you. So you can say, I want to get that card, and I hope he doesn't draft that one because I want that one too. Exactly. Plus, you know a little bit about what's still in the deck, at yes. least you know depending on what you see that was in your initial hand and what's not out on the table. What I'm trying to say <laughs> is that it's a really good variant. The two-player variant yes. was just as good as the four-player game. Uh, fantastic game. Fields of Green by Stronghold Games. A great take on Artipia's original game, Among the Stars. If you guys have any questions, make them in the comments below. Subscribe to us, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. Come out and say hi to us at Origins. And we will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye. Season 1 of Man vs. Meeple is sponsored by our friends at TMG Games. And at Cool Stuff, Inc. Cool Stuff in stock at CoolStuffInc.com.